preheats the oven to 50 degrees Celsius. Now to make the dough, I'm using 120 grams of flour, plain flour, 125 grams of salt, mixing all that together with the spoon. And then I'm going to add 125 milliliters of water. Mix that up with a spoon again. And then we're going to start to knead the mixture like we knead bread. This process is quite similar to a process we use to make clay when we recycle old clay. So it's quite similar to working directly with clay, but it's just using household ingredients. So it's coming together now. It's a little bit crummy. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water to the mixture. Not too much at all, just a drop. It's important that you don't add too much water at any one time, as too much water means it'll take forever to dry out. You'll need to knead this mixture for about five to 10 minutes. Again, it's still a little bit crummy there. So I'm going to add just a little bit more water, just the drop again. It's quite a tough process this, so you'll have a lot of muscles once you finish this task. There we go, that's looking a lot smoother and softer. So just forming the dough now into a ball. Getting rid of any lines we have. This also makes sure we check that the dough comes together nicely as well. I'm going to cut the ball of dough now in half. So I'm just pressing the clay open there, just so it's easier to add the colour into it. I'm just using food colouring to do this. You can use any colour you want. Just adding a little bit at a time before we start kneading it like we did earlier. We need to make sure we get rid of any white marbling that's in the dough at the moment, so keep working it. You can also add some more colour into the dough. You'll need a little bit, quite a little bit of colouring to make a nice dark colour. It does tend to go a little lighter sometimes when you cook it. You can see there a nice solid blue colour appearing. It 
you can see the contrast in colours there. Now we've finished making the dough we need to put them into plastic bags. This will make sure that the air doesn't get to them and this means that they won't dry out. Now place them into the refrigerator for about half an hour before you start working with them. With the dough, place it in between two magazines of similar thickness. The magazines will help us roll out the dough into a nice even thickness. If you reach the point where the dough is the same thickness as the magazines but not large enough in area, remove the magazines and continue to roll the dough without the aid of the magazines. Turn the dough to a quarter every time in between rolls, carefully. If you haven't got cookie cutters then an alternative is using household items. Here I'm using the lid from a hairspray and this gives us a nice circular shape. Um, have a look at what you have around the house. Here I'm using some, some lace for creating textured patterns, repeat patterns on the dough or the clay and then simply cutting out our decorations with the lid. The lid is also flexible, which gives us a different shape, not long shape. Using the body of a biro, like so, compress a hole in our decoration so we can hang some cord through the hole to hang it up later on. Another method of creating pattern on the dough or the clay is by using string or cord. You can roll the cord into the dough or the clay um, in a random fashion and every time you'll do this it'll be slightly different so no two decorations will ever be the same. You can also use a stencil to create different shaped decorations. The card template is then placed on the dough or the clay and simply cut around the template with a plastic knife. Be sure to dip the knife in water, running the knife along the edges of the decoration to give a clean finish. Another technique that can be used is called marbling. By mixing both white and the blue dough together, you can create a streaky clay body to work with. You will need to roll out both coloured doughs and into sausages before twisting them together and rolling them in your hands to form a ball. You can then go ahead and roll out the ball with the rolling pin, ready to create your decorations. This marbled effect is enough decoration in itself, but you can also work other patterns into the dough as well. By using household items again, 
like this sharpener an interesting pen lid and the serrated edge of a knife I can form a little house decoration to hang again by simply using the serrated edge of the knife I can turn this heart into an aquatic themed decoration such as a shell By using the same shaped template twice, you can alter the shape of your final decoration, like with this house shape template here. By using it twice, I'm altering the shape and the shape becomes an arrow. Once you feel comfortable in applying decoration to your decorations, you can try a different technique of applying the pattern on top of your finished cutout decoration, like so. Be careful not to press too hard and dishape your decoration.